Hello guys, the idea of the video is uh, trying to present the rest of the um, um, periods of literature that we were not able to cover. Uh, I have decided to divide this into different uh, videos, so you're able to, number one, um, well, um, sort of uh, find information in a better way if you require to repeat a particular segment or something similar. And also because in this way it's probably easier to send you um, any additional material and if, if we're talking about uh, either links or um, well the different um, formats of the video. So uh, for this is going to be really important that uh, we get into our PowerPoint presentation, right? Um, so um, everything that I'm going to be talking in here is going to be having the read and support in in the PowerPoint presentation. So we're going to start in here by the slide number 112, that is the one that contains information about the Edwardian period, right? Um, well, as you can see, uh, different from the other periods, we have only one slide, right? This uh, really, really short in comparison with the previous ones. And this has a particular reason and it's basically uh, the fact that the Edwardian period uh, it's let's say no more than a little bit of an extension of the Victorian period so just very quickly to try and, and uh, summarize what we talk about the Victorian period remember the extremely detailed descriptions um, the two vertians that they were managing like one that was hyper realistic and in which they describe every single detail uh, no matter how nasty or dirty or disgusting was uh, of society, of uh, people in um, different uh, positions, uh, we talk about the orphans, all these different things that were realistic of the society of the moment. And then we also had, um, well, the other version that went a little bit more wild or, or wilder on, on the imagination side, so we have all these machines uh, all these uh, engines and, and let's say um, all these uh, imaginary that that, that that imaginary situations that had a lot to do with real life too but that eventually uh, provided the possibility of uh, having inventions or just uh, approaches to what we have today in terms of technology so uh, this Edwardian period, as you can see in the slide number 112, um, let's say it's more or less located between 1901 and 1914, just like in the previous period in which uh, the, uh, um, the period itself was uh, baptized because of the monarch of the time that was uh, uh, Victoria. Well, in this case, we are going to be having King Edward, and then we go back to another transition of uh, a male uh, monarch, a male king. Uh, of course, Victoria did a, a great job, not let's say in terms of uh, her fairness specifically, but at least she was effective. Um, nevertheless, well, uh, let's say that in this succession we are going to see a lot of kings and monarchs and, uh, and regents, let's say, that are that are uh, male so this is uh, basically the reason for the for the name of the period uh, the thing is that even though we continue with some of the most important um, um, features of the previous period such as uh, the highly detailed descriptions such as um, mm, let's say an approximation or an approach to reality and to uh, let's say the different things related into uh, the um, problematic or issues that society was having at the time um, well uh, let's say that we can find some um, important differences or additions into this uh, in comparison with the Victorian period so the first of them would be that, um, let's say, uh, ironic as it sounds, many of the tragedies presented in here were not limited to the um, popular segment of uh, citizenship. Um, 
bad and we started like also approaching the tragedies if we can call them that way or the difficulties or issues of royalty or the uh, medium class or people who were a little bit more um, let's say uh, wealthy right and um, so um, they were initially or at least in the previous period apparently not too relevant and nevertheless in this one uh, it was um, a concern uh, so they were also presented in this case so uh, you would say well what kind of a problem can can have a rich person well so we we start having topics related such as loneliness such as exclusion such as uh, let's say the member of either royalty or of a um, high class that wanted to have contact what uh, with um, people from um, from lower classes but they were segregated of course like they were not supposed to be part of their customs they were not supposed to hang around the places uh, um, where uh, the poor people um, used to be and all these different cases of course they have a lot of restrictions in terms of the people they can marry to love to have uh, relationships with and that is also something that is presented in there uh, that let's say it's a continuation of the uh, values of Victorian because um, let's say that in the previous period they, they were really concerned about the possibility of um, making everybody equal so actually having uh, let's say vulnerable people or traditionally believed in vulnerable people such as royalty or wealthy people rich people and uh, getting to know by means of literature that they also have problems that they also have difficulties and that they also suffer and um, it's some sort of a continuation of the values that we were exploring in the previous in the previous period um, I would like to refer very briefly to some of these um, important um, pieces of literature that we have in this period like the ones that you can see in there in the in the slide um, the first one that I would like to mention is uh, Heart of Darkness by Joseph Conrad. Uh, this is a really interesting book. It's a short one, but it's uh, really, really worth the reading. Basically, uh, this, uh, this book or this story explores uh, the condition of a uh, military, it's some sort of a captain or a general, something similar that was sent to colonize a faraway region and uh, he was successful but eventually he went nuts right he just uh, became crazy and uh, sort of created his own personal empire in there um, his own uh, personal version of the UK but with him as a monarch with him as a king uh, or the regent of uh, these people and uh, well the story let's say that starts uh, with uh, the sending of another military, another representative of, of military forces uh, that was sent to sort of either correct this mistake by um, kidnapping or preferably killing this original uh, captain that went um, to have this, uh, let's say, personal empire in there. Um, it's, uh, let's say, a trip adventure in terms of uh, that it's uh, everything happens um, during the trip in, in a river and um, this uh, this trip it's in a boat that in turns more and more into the into the jungle and and uh, the more you go uh, in, into the jungle uh, the more this new person or this new military understands all the reasons that that the original military had for becoming what he became um, let's say the poverty of people in there uh, the fact that they were treated as slaves the fact that they were invaded in their own house and uh, that the fact that they were supposed to follow certain rules uh, proposed by the state by the empire um, by people that they didn't even understand because they didn't have the same language and uh, basically it's a trip into the psyche of the motivations of this guy and in the end basically he uh, understands completely the original uh, military that wasn't there and he even justifies his behavior 
uh, it's like too much power for one single man and and after everything that happened in there like anybody can become crazy so as you can see even military people who were supposed to be the toughest uh, guys around who were not supposed to express their feelings or uh, you know to crack under pressure and um, have uh, these difficulties in there so that it's the spirit of Edwardian you see really similar to Victoria nevertheless let's say that the problems that are presented in here are usually from people of um, say higher um, positions then uh, let's say an a part chapter uh, deserves H.G. Wells he's one of the um, forefathers of science fiction uh, so as you can see we have a, a very hyper realistic side of the tendency such as the uh, heart of darkness that i just mentioned and then we have the imaginative side just like in victorian now this guy hg wells uh, presented some of the most famous uh, science fiction uh, pieces uh, of, of the world and there's been like tons of movies and series and um let's say uh, his literature has been translated into a lot of different media uh, video games movies tv series uh, comic books and uh, well he's the author of the time machine he's the author of um, the war of the worlds he's the author uh, of uh, a lot of different uh, pieces of literature that has to do with science fiction uh, the interesting thing about this is that he, it was a really, really compromised science fiction. So, for example, if we're talking about um, the time machine, so H.G. Wells in here presents a fantastic story, but um, let's say at the core it is a um, critique. Uh, he's criticizing um, the capitalist and the communist uh, system and, and, and the um, division of classes and in the Morlocks and the Elohim that are some of the protagonists or the uh, main characters in this book well we can see a lot of uh, similarities to humans uh, he criticizes certain things about the value of art how sometimes it is uh, overrated and how sometimes it is underrated and he gives a really interesting discussion about uh, what is art um, let's say that in the world of the worlds we're talking about uh, uh, let's say the survival of the strongest right and this is a direct um, opposition to um, to the um, empire of England right remember that we have been since the period of British colonialism uh, the fact that uh, England did whatever they want because they could because they were really good at the sea because they had a a really powerful fleet because they have military training because they have uh, resources they had a lot of different um, let's say um, possibilities of oppressing uh, other uh, countries or, re or regions and, and not being punished so this is uh, A.G. Wells wondering well what happens if we have an advanced a technologically advanced civilization that comes here and does exactly the same that um, the UK is doing they control us because they can um, so this is even though being sort of fantastic and um, well it's uh, um, a direct impact on, on, on the modus operandi of uh, the British Empire um, well let's say that H.G. Wells here uh, separates a little bit uh, of the importance of the characters from the importance of the situation itself we see for example that many many of his main characters have no name right so uh, the hero or the the main character in the time machine is simply called the time traveler and many of the most important uh, characters in the world of the worlds um, are just common people that are never named uh, but they represent sort of an archetype right because one of them uh, it's uh, like a commoner a, a regular worker and we have policemen and we have uh, doctors and all these different things and actually uh, even though there are many names mentioned in, in these stories um, well uh, they are not they are not really relevant the most important are the ones who 
do not receive a name. Um, as you can see in one of the uh, vignettes in here, uh, one of the marks, uh, it says that the status quo is increasingly threatened, right? Remember that in the Victorian period there was um, a big um, time of prosperity for a few, and nevertheless here uh, England is starting to lose, uh, let's say, its position as the leader of the free world and, and, and as uh, the most important nation and uh, let's say that little by little uh, here even since the Edwardian period we are seeing that there is a shift of power uh, and uh, the new nation, this young nation that is the United States of America it's starting to become more and more relevant and it's on, on its way to you know, become the leader of the world um, so basically that's it about the Edwardian period, as I mentioned it's, it's not uh, that long because there's some sort of a reproduction of, of the previous one, the Victorian, and um, that's, that's what we have. So take that into account anyway with this video, hopefully I will be uh, referring you to either some links or some pictures of uh, some examples of Edwardian texts, uh, maybe a couple of paragraphs or something similar. So you're able to uh, check them out and, and verify some, sam some samples that, that may give you a clearer idea of uh, this sort of literature and how to identify it, okay? So that was for the Barton period. I will be shortly sending um, the other period that we're going to be talking about. Thank you.